In this and the coming several video lectures, we want to discuss Java's operators, which are special symbols used to modify data in our programs. OK, let's get started. So the past several video lectures have been devoted to the subjects of data and data types in Java. We've learned how to set up variables, which are containers for data in programs. But now that we've perhaps got some data stored in variables, what can we do with it? Operators are special symbols in Java, such as these, which operate upon data in programs. Using operators, we'll see how to write expressions which can change or manipulate our program data. Operands, by contrast, are the dual elements of operators. Operands are the data that operators operate upon. They can be a number of types of things, such as variables, constants, literals, objects, and other things as well. And by the way, the idea of operators isn't anything new or specific to Java. All programming languages provide for operators, and as we'll see, they are extremely similar in other languages. So once again, if you take the time to learn and understand operators in Java, you'll have that much of a leg up on your next programming languages. So when we're working with operators, there are several aspects that we want to take into account. The first consideration is the number of operands involved with any operator. The vast majority of operators in Java are binary operators, as we see here. By the way, in this context, binary has no relation to the base2 numbering system we've already examined. Instead, binary refers to the two operands which surround a binary operator, one on each side. Java also has several unary operators, which involve only one operand. As we see here, unary operators may be of the prefix or the postfix form, which simply designate which side of the operand they appear on. We'll see examples of this shortly. Interestingly, Java also has one ternary operator, which involves three operands, and we'll encounter this one later in the course when we talk about logical structures. With operators, we may also be concerned with the data types of the operands involved. Frequently, both operands may be of the same type, but there are also provisions for operators working with operands of mixed data types. Another consideration is the execution order in which operations get performed, also known as precedence. There is a table of relative operator precedence, which we'll get to a bit later on. And finally, one other consideration will sometimes be the direction in which operations are evaluated either left to right or right to left. We'll also consider this in the context of precedence. Before we go much further, let's define the notion of an expression. An expression is similar to a statement, but it's something less than a full statement. An expression is just some collection of operators and operands that, taken together, evaluate to one single value on the right-hand side of some statement. Recall that we said a statement was one complete standalone instruction in some code, and it's always terminated with a semicolon. By contrast, an expression is just the right-hand side of an equal sign in any statement, such as this one, and cannot stand on its own to be executed. It's part of a statement, but it's not a statement in and of itself. In CS terms, we would say that some right-hand side expression value its one single value gets assigned to the left-hand side target in some statement, as shown here. All of this is kind of abstract and is probably best seen with some examples. Here are a bunch of examples of expressions in Java. Notice that in these examples, the expressions are shown in green fonts, and they always constitute the right-hand side of each of these statements. All of these expressions on the right-hand sides ultimately evaluate to one single value of whatever data type it happens to be. Can you see that if you fully evaluate any of these green expressions, they result in one single value? Several of these first ones are simple literals, and the literal technically qualifies as an expression by itself. But for these other two, which are performing simple calculations, we first evaluate the right-hand side fully by performing the operation, then we are left with one single value, 13 in this case, and 20 in this case, which is then assigned to the left-hand side variable. Notice that in this case in red, we cannot update the value of the constant one dozen because we've already declared it to be final, which means its value cannot change once initially established. As we see in these last two examples, 
An expression doesn't necessarily need to involve an operator. For example, in this case, we are instantiating or creating a new person object and its creation gets assigned to the object named Sam. Or in this case, we are calling a method of the person class upon the Sam object to retrieve the last name, which is presumably a string with the value Smith, which is then assigned to the left-hand side string object last name. So again, in all these cases, an expression is simply something that can be evaluated to one single value and used in some larger context. One common operator which we've already been using without even realizing it is the assignment operator. We've probably just seen it as being the equal sign. The assignment operator is used to assign the right-hand side value of an expression to some left-hand side target, either a variable or an object. In programming, it can be helpful to think of the equal sign not with its usual meaning, but instead as being a left-facing arrow as shown here. Again, what this means is that the right-hand side expression is fully evaluated, and then the left-hand side variable is assigned that single right-hand side value. Perhaps this example on the right will drive home the point for us. An expression such as this one would be impossible in algebra because there is no possible value of A that satisfies this, but it's actually very common in programming. What this means is that we go to some computer memory and grab the current value of the variable A, then use it to fully evaluate the right-hand side, which of course becomes 11. Then we reassign the single value 11 to the variable A, which just means we go ahead and overwrite the old value of 10 in memory with its updated value of 11. Here are a couple more assignment operator examples. Again, the assignment operator in programming is simply what we know otherwise is the equal sign, but now we view it as being a left-facing arrow. In the first example, we declare a student count variable and initialize its value to 10, then later we update its value to 8. In the next example, we declare and initialize illegal age to 18, then we use that same variable as the right-hand side expression to update voter age to 18. The last example demonstrates an illegal operation. We can't perform the right-hand side operation involving with because we haven't declared or initialized with until the following step. Remember, we said that with variables, we can't do anything with them until they are declared and initialized. Any attempt to make this kind of calculation will result in a compiler error.